And Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has announced the proposed question that Australians will be asked on the controversial voice to Parliament. It comes as his last-minute bid for the coalition to support it is denied. We're going to cross now to Nationals leader David Littleproud. David, thank you for your time this evening. Look, it has been a very momentous day today. We saw the Prime Minister tell Australians what the question will be that they will be asked to vote on at the referendum. You have been standing side by side with, side by side with no campaigners. Why won't you support the voice to Parliament? Uh, because this is history repeating itself. Uh, we've had a representative body before and the Nationals uh, see the consequences of this because we represent those that are the most disadvantaged in the Indigenous communities and they're in remote communities of across Australia. Uh, and putting in another layer of bureaucracy won't change this. We don't need a bigger bureaucracy, we need a better bureaucracy. Uh, and this is about making sure that bureaucracy does what they should and the failure of governments of all political persuasions of the past has been that we haven't got the bureaucracy out of Canberra and sat them around campfires and town halls and designed local programs for local communities that they have then have empowerment by because they have buy-in. Because the solution in Wilcannia is different to that in uh, what air as it is in Carnarvon. And so what we're saying is if the Prime Minister had come to us and said, we want to give constitutional recognition in the Constitution, the preamble, uh, I, and saying that Indigenous Australians were here first, we're better together, and, uh, and we'll be better together sticking together, then uh, the National Party, I sense, would have supported that. But to right, go down so just, so just a route to that be clear, you before, would So you would support recognition in the Constitution. It's the actual body to Parliament that you're not supporting. Well, exactly. If, if that was the question that was put to the National Party party room, I sense from my party room colleagues that that would be a different outcome of us supporting. But putting in another layer of bureaucracy uh, yeah. is, hasn't worked before. And so we want to be pragmatic well, about this. Well, We're genuine in our intent to close the gap. We really well, are. Well, and there's no ask malice you about in our that. decision. Let me ask you about that. You say <coughs> that, um, you know, this won't help close the gap. But isn't it worth giving it a try? Uh, it is the case that the majority of MPs in federal parliament are white. Uh, the voice body, at least the proposal that we hear today, um, would be people elected by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities. Um, isn't it worth giving it a go to see if we can close the gap? Because nothing that has been attempted so far has worked. Because we have given it a go and it didn't work last time. And we're the ones that live with that consequence. It'll, this will work in Redfern. But that's not where the disadvantage is. Where the gap is, is widest is in remote communities. And just to put this in perspective, a representative body... But if of the remote communities people, have a representative no, no, on, well, the, on the voice body, then, it, you know, it, they yeah, might be well, able to it, address the issues that, that are from their community. So, so I'll explain, because it might be difficult from someone from Sydney that's never lived in a remote community or lived in these regional communities to understand that you will be representing an area, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of square kilometres, hundreds of different communities across that geographical area that have a different challenge and a different opportunity in each one of those. Even in my own electorate, I represent 10% of the Australian landmass. Uh, a solution and a challenge in Warwick is different to that in Birdsville or in Cunnamulla or in Longreach. And to say that this is adding another layer of bureaucracy that they will know best that someone that lives possibly in Warwick will represent someone in Birdsville about the challenges and the needs that they need uh, is absurd. Well, and what, what do I'm you think would be a better idea is, is to address have... some of the Indigenous disadvantage that, that exists in these remote communities? Do you have a better idea? Well, it, it's... I do. It's, it's simply about the government doing their job, and we failed of all political persuasions the government, of the past. This is not, but that's the point. The well, government of all political persuasions of, of the past have failed, so why not, have, why not give it a go, have an Indigenous voice to Parliament and see if they can start addressing some of the issues from but, within but the many different communities, Indigenous if communities? If you don't live in those communities, Shari, and this is the problem that city people don't understand of these, of these communities that we live in and represent, is they can't tell you. You actually have the community to do that. So what we're saying is that the bureaucracy needs to work better. You can't have a bureaucracy sitting here in Canberra. They need to be taken out of Canberra and they need to sit around the campfires. They need to sit around the communities and work and design with local elders 
as yeah. well as local councils to design. But Mr Littleproud, there's nothing to say, surely, that some of those local elders couldn't be part of the voice to Parliament. There's nothing they to say that it has to be uh, Indigenous leaders them, who live in Do Canberra. Do the math. Do the math, Shari. There's only 20 or 30 of these people. You are talking... So you're, you're thinking from a city perspective, and that's great, and, and you come with this great intent. I think all Australians are coming with great intent. We come with practical reality. We come with the practical reality of understanding the mechanics of how this will work. And this is before the lawyers at 100 paces will be squaring off with one another. Okay. We so come with the genuine intent of understanding how you actually see this work. And, and let me say, we have had success in some parts of, of Australia. This isn't all doom and gloom. We have shifted and closed the gap in some communities where we have empowered them with the local solutions. Yeah. The local solutions that they design, because if they design, they have more buy-in. And they okay. actually make it work. I just want to so ask you a, a is... couple more questions. Just to be clear, I'm not advocating one position or another. I'm just asking you yeah, questions yeah. here. Now, when this goes to the Parliament in June, will you be voting no to the actual referendum? Well, well our party room will, will meet. We've now only just seen what the, what the question is. But our party room will have that mature discussion, as we did when we got to this principal position, because we could get to this position because... Uh, it was always going to be off the co-design voice. But you speak to your, your you it. speak to your colleagues all the time. Do you think you're intending to vote no uh, to having the referendum at all? The the last thing that any national party leader should do is to think that they understand uh, where the end position of their party okay. national party. Well, what's party your party opinion? We'll, we'll what's your what about your personal position? Do you think this should be a no well, vote? My, yeah, I, I'm, I don't support the voice, full stop. I so think you don't if, think there should the be a referendum at all? I'm, ju I'm just well, asking about whether no, there should I be think, a referendum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the that's the that's the discussion that our party room will have, and I'll and I'll be guided not just by myself, but I, I want to hear from the divergent views of the national party. That's the beauty of the national What's, party, the diversity yeah. of the national just, party of experience. So I, I, I'll I'll reserve my judgment until my colleagues and I can get in a room. And we discuss this maturely, as we did from lived experience, the unique lived experience that only the nationals, because we represent and live okay. in these communities, rather than city people looking down their nose at us. All right. Well, um, I appreciate your time, uh, David Littlebrout, and we'll interview you on this again. Everyone has a, a different opinion, and, and you know it's fair enough uh, to explore all sides of this debate, and that's what has to happen in the months ahead.